Welcome back, and thank you for joining Bite Size DJ as we discuss microaggressions within the computing education space. In our CS216 course, we just got a huge group project assigned where we have to use what we've learned so far in the class to build both the front end and back end for a website. I've been looking forward to this project and it was actually a big reason for why I took the course. I've been hoping to get a lot more back end experience. It's a chance to challenge myself. But when we met with our groups, one guy told me it would be best that I take over the design front end portion since women really are much better at that kind of stuff. I laughed it off as a hit and miss joke, but it's been hours later and it's still not quite sitting right with me. He didn't say anything majorly offensive, so why am I still feeling uncomfortable and hurt? What our narrator is feeling is her emotional reaction to a microaggression. The term microaggression was coined by Harvard psychiatrist Dr. Chester Pierce in 1970 to describe the regular insults and dismissals he witnessed of people who were non-black use against people who were black. Currently, according to the paper publication titled Text Mining Microaggressions Literature, Implications Impacting Black Computing Faculty, microaggression is a term used to describe brief and commonplace daily verbal behavior or environmental indignities, whether intentional or unintentional, that communicate hostility and sensitivity and negativity to an individual or group. There are three types of microaggressions. The first is microassaults, deliberate or intentional slights meant to offend or hurt the intended victim, including racial slurs and other abusive language. The second is microinvalidations, the attempt to discredit or minimize the experiences of a person from a marginalized group. The third is microinsults, rude, insensitive comments that subtly disrespect a person's identity. What the narrator experienced is an example of microinsults. Because of her gender identity, her groupmate made an incredibly insensitive comment. Though the term includes the word micro, do not be misled. The negative impact of microaggressions can be severe. Microaggressions carry a heavy psychological impact, potentially causing the person to feel isolated, ignored, insignificant. So instances of microaggressions should be taken seriously and never brushed off as a misunderstanding or harmless joke. Let's return back to the narrator scenario. As a professor, you can make intentional efforts in fostering a space of support and no tolerance for microaggressive language and actions. Consider these five recommendations. Establish clear expectations at the beginning of the course regarding treatment of peers. Review and update class policies to explicitly address instances of microaggressions and clearly outline consequences for such inappropriate, harmful behavior. Foster an environment where dialogue about microaggressions is encouraged. Allow a way for students to anonymously report incidences and establish support systems for those who experience microaggressions. Incorporate the necessary training and education that will allow you to be better equipped for recognizing and responding to microaggressions. One great example is ACE's very own 3C Fellows Program. Of course, it's crucial to know that the institution you work in also bears a lot of the responsibility for providing the necessary resources to address issues like microaggressions. And remember, microaggressions, though often subtle, are very harmful and must be taken seriously, addressed, and handled appropriately.